Welcome to lessons 11.6 and 11.7 for honors geometry. So today we're going to go over the area of regular polygons and we're going to learn a little bit about geometric probability. So before we get into the area of regular polygons, let's go over a couple of key terms. The first is a radius of a polygon. I know you're familiar with a radius of a circle and it's very similar to a radius of a circle, but Specifically, the radius of a polygon is going to be the segment from the center of a polygon to an end point of a side. So for example, we have a polygon here. This is our center. The radius is going to be the segment that goes from the center to an end point of the side. So it's going to be where the two, two different sides meet at. That will be your radius. Now we're going to learn a new term called the apothem. The apothem of a polygon is going to be the length of a segment from the center of the polygon that's going to be perpendicular to a side. So it's actually kind of considered to be like the height of a polygon. If a, if a polygon doesn't really have a height, but it's kind of like that. So it's always going to be perpendicular to the side of a polygon. So that's called your apothem. And we're gonna use the apothem when we learn about the area of polygons. So now let's move on to the next slide. So the area of a regular polygon, and this area formula only works for regular polygons. Theorem 11.11 .11 states that the area of a regular n-gon with side length s is one half the product of the apothem a and the perimeter p. So the n up here, that's just referring to how many sides it has. So it could be a hexagon with six sides, or it could be a dodecagon with 12 sides. So if we have a regular polygon and we have a side length s, we can figure out the area and it's going to be one half of the apothem. And remember the apothem is going from the center and it's perpendicular to a side and the perimeter. And the way that you can figure out perimeter, perimeter is just simply the number of sides, which is n, times the length of that side. So n times s. So that's why we have these two different formulas here. We have area equals one half the apothem times the perimeter, or we can simply substitute in the formula for perimeter and say that area equals one half the apothem times the number of sides times the length of that side. So that's the formula that you're gonna use for any type of regular polygon. This works for any type of regular polygon. So let's actually put this into practice. So we want to find the area and the perimeter of the regular decagon given below, and it has a radius of eight centimeters. So the only thing that we know about this polygon is we know that it centers right here. We've got a radius of eight centimeters and it's a regular decagon. So we know that it has 10 sides, so n equals 10. How are we gonna figure out what the area is? Well, first thing that we can do is we can actually draw a triangle in here. So we can draw a triangle, an isosceles triangle to be exact. And now we have a triangle here, and we can use what we know about a regular polygon to figure out some information here. So since this is a regular polygon, we know that every single triangle that we were to draw to each end point is going to have the same angle measure right here. And specifically, we can calculate that. That angle measure is going to be 360 degrees divided by the number of sides, which in this case is 10. So that means that this angle measure right here is 36 degrees. So this angle is 36 degrees. But we can take this even one step further. We can find the area of this triangle now using trig. So we are going to draw its height, which actually happens to be its apothem. So we have a triangle now, and we can say that this is one half of our side length. And we're going to call that x for just right now. So if we were to take that triangle and draw it over here, we've got a triangle that, whose angle measure is going to be half of 36, so it'll be 18, 
because it's an isosceles triangle and we cut it in half. And we know that its hypotenuse is 8 and this is a right triangle. So we can now use trigonometry to solve for the other lengths of this tri triangle. So to solve for the side length x, we're going to use sine. We're going to say that sine of 18 degrees equals our opposite side, which is x, over our hypotenuse, which is 8. So now solving for x, you're going to get 8 times sine 18 degrees. And when you plug that into your calculator, you get 2.47 centimeters. So we know that 2.47 centimeters is half of a side length. So therefore, we can solve for the side, and that equals 4.94. So our side length is 4.94 centimeters. So now that we have the side length, we know the formula for perimeter. Perimeter, remember from the previous slide we wrote down, equals the number of sides times the side length. So our perimeter is going to equal 10 times 4.94 centimeters. So our perimeter of this decagon is 49.4 centimeters. Okay, so we've got part of our equation for our area. Now we need to find the apothem. We're going to use cosine for that because we're looking for this side right here, A. So that's going to be our adjacent side to our angle, and we're going to use our hypotenuse. So we're going to go down here, and we've got cosine of 18 degrees equals A over 8. So solving for A, we end up with cosine of 18 degrees times 8, and you get that that is 7.61 centimeters. So now we have all the pieces that we need to solve for the area. So our formula for area is 1 half times our apothem times our perimeter. So plugging that in, we're going to get 1 half of 7.61 times 49.4. And that equals 187.9 centimeters squared. So that's how you're going to use trigonometry to solve for the apothem, which will help you solve for the area of a polygon. And you may already have some other pieces of information, so instead of using trig, there may be some cases where you can use the Pythagorean theorem instead. Okay, so let's move on to the next topic. Now we're going to talk about geometric probability. Geometric probability is different. You've probably dealt with a little bit of probability before in your algebra class. But geometric probability is a little bit different in the fact that it's a ratio that involves a geometric measure, such as length or area. So for length, we're going to talk about the segment that we have below. We have segment AB. It's this black segment that goes through. And segment AB contains segment CD. We want to know what is the probability that if we were to randomly place a point on segment AB, that it will be also on segment CD. And the way that we can calculate that is using this formula right here. The probability that point K is on CD equals the length of CD divided by the length of AB. So for example, let's say that CD was 6 units. And let's say that we knew that AB had a length of 10 units. We can calculate the probability that a point randomly placed on segment AB, so the probability that K is on CD, because we're going to randomly place it anywhere on AB, but we want to know what is the probability that it will actually be on CD. And we take that by doing 6 divided by 10, which we can reduce to 3 fifths, or we can write it as a decimal as 0 0.6. So the probability that point K will be on segment CD 
is 0.6. And that would be your answer. We can also take this probability and translate it to areas. So let's move on to the next slide. So now we're going to let J, this, this region, this goofy kind of polygon looking region here, and it contains region M. So M is within J. So if we take a point K chosen at random, and it's definitely contained in J, we want to know that the probability that K, oh, that should be a K right there, that K is in region M, that's going to be the ratio of the area of M to the area of J. So let's take, for example, let's say the area of M is 5 units squared. And we're going to say that the area of J is 100 units squared. If we were to take point K and randomly place it on here, it's simply 5 over 100, just like on the previous slide. So that would give us 0 0.05. That would be our probability that point K would be on or in region M. So that's all you have to do is take the area of the smaller region and divide it by the area of the bigger region. All right, that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.